Now back to the election campaign and I'm joined by the Chancellor and Tory election strategist George Osborne. Good morning to you. Good morning. As Tory election strategist, you have just blown a huge hole in your own strategy by making an £8 billion unfunded pledge on the NHS, exactly what you said you were not going to do. Why? Well, I don't accept that at all. We have a balanced plan to grow our economy, to make savings in government, including in welfare, to fund our NHS each and every year, to give a tax cut to working people, you've, so that we make work pay, we support our public services, and we have, an, we have an economic policy that supports our entire country. You've just found an extra £8 billion. Well, all I'm asking is, where does it come from? Well, if no, you, no higher taxes? Extra public spending cuts where? Well, it's part of our balanced plan. And if you look over the last five years... That's not really an answer, Well, Chancellor. it is, actually. If you look at the last five years, we found over £7 billion in real terms for the NHS. That's what happens when you have a sensible plan that makes savings in government, makes efficiencies in government, and then uses the dividends of that to fund our National Health Service each and every year and to support working people with tax cuts. You can't, do, you can't have strong public you're services a, without a strong economy. You're in a situation where you've told us there are huge public spending cuts to come. There's going to be a very, very well, tough time to get rid of the deficit. You've said that in the autumn statement and you've repeated it again in the budget. All I'm saying is you've now found, halfway through right. an election campaign, an extra £8 billion, pounds, yeah, we, which is not nothing. No, no, we have always said we supported the NHS's own plan for its sustainable future, so we offer the best health care in the world and the best medicines. But the money, Simon the money. Stevens, the chief executive, came up mm. with that plan. We worked with him. We have funded an initial part of it already. And because we have this balanced economic plan, because we are prepared to take difficult decisions in other parts of government, we can go on increasing the money to the NHS, just like we did in the last parliament. Okay. You, know, you said to me, Andrew, five years ago, you can't increase spending on the NHS every year. In the interview we did in the, uh, before the last election, we have increased spending on the NHS each year. We've also delivered a where, tax cut for I'm working people where each the money and every is year. Where the money is coming from. The inheritance tax announcement that you've made this mm. morning, you have said we're going to fund that by raising taxes yeah. on some pensioners. So we know where the money is coming from. The £8 billion pounds on the NHS, you have said nothing like well, that. It's totally of, opaque. Well, I'll, I'll come on to the inheritance tax plan, but we have got a balanced proposal to make savings in government equivalent to one pound in every hundred that the government spends, so that yes, we eliminate our deficit and fix the roof when the sun is shining, but also so we can fund a brilliant You're NHS and me where the give a tax from. cut to working people. In this parliament, we have found over seven billion pounds. And by the way, you know, in this parliament, we had to make even more difficult decisions on public expenditure. We had five years of public expenditure as, as restraint. Reason, okay. And in the next parliament, we need two years of public expenditure uh, savings. We've set out the balance plan to achieve it. And part of the balance plan, and look, I'm not pretending it's easy, but we made a judgment call. Right? We want to back the people who rely on our National Health Service. We want to back the people Don't who work in our Don't say hard-working families, please. I'm talking about all yeah. families in this mm. country who rely on our National Health Service and, indeed, the brilliant people who work in it. So if you're not going to tell me where the money is coming from, I'm going to tell you where the money is coming from. It's going to come from even deeper cuts in the unprotected departmental spending budgets of around 14% in total. So you're going to hit the police, you're going to hit the armed forces, you're going to hit local government to pay for this. We That's have, the we truth, have to make it? similar savings uh, each year as we've made in the five years of this parliament, but for two years. So let's finish the job. Let's not leave this country exposed to the economic storms out there in the world. Let's eliminate the deficit, keep our national debt falling as a share of national income as it now is, as part of a plan for economic security in our country, security for families, security for our country, security for the businesses that create jobs. Okay. So you're not going to give me an answer on the eight billion well, where I've, it's coming I've said from. It's, uh, you I've, haven't given me an answer. I, With respect, you've said the economy is going to grow, everything is going to be fine. No, I, I, Somehow I, I, we'll find the money. It's exactly what you attacked Labour no, for again and again. No, no. You can never again say it's another unfunded Labour spending promise. Not after this. Andrew, I come on this programme and say yes, we've got to make difficult decisions in public expenditure. But I won't yes, tell we've you what got they to are. save one out of a hundred pounds the government spends. Yes, we've got to make savings in government departments. Yes, we've got to make savings in welfare, including a freeze on working age benefits. So where is the big benefits. cut coming? Is it but coming that is in part police? Of a balanced plan in order to eliminate our deficit, give our country economic security so we create jobs, fund our National Health Service and make work pay by giving working people more of what they earn. So it's fair for me to say to you this eight billion is coming from deepest cuts in unprotected It's part of our department. public expenditure plans and you only have It's to, not coming from we, extra we have, taxes is it? Andrew we have a track record in this parliament where we found almost £8 billion extra in real terms for the National Health Service in very, very difficult economic circumstances. So we proved our mettle. We proved our ability to stand behind the National Health Service okay. in this parliament. Let me try one last time. Let me try one last time. 
eight billion is the limit. It could be much higher than that. That's the bottom limit. It could be much higher than money if, well, if you don't get the if you don't get the efficiencies that you want yeah, the, and you don't know that. Yeah, you the will. assessment so could, of the NHS itself. This is not. So the, the, this is not my. Okay, well, let's start with the, the assessment of the NHS itself is that it can find those efficiencies. Of course, because so let's you want to make with, sure okay, let's all, stick with every the eight billion. Goes first. Let's stick with the eight billion. You're not going to borrow that money, are you? It's part of our. Are you going to, you going to borrow an extra eight billion? It's part of our plan. To reduce Are you the going deficit. to borrow an extra eight billion? We're not, we don't have to no. borrow it because it's. Been Are you going to raise it in taxes? I, I've just explained. We've got a balanced plan <laughs> that involves saving thirteen billion pounds in departments, twelve billion pounds in welfare. I'm talking we yes, but raise five billion extra from dealing with aggressive tax planning and tax avoidance and evasion. So As no more. Part of so that no plan, extra you can borrowing. Fund the national health service. You're not going to fund, fund the. funding for the health service has always been integral to the plan. So you're not going to fund the extra eight billion for the health service by borrowing. You're not going to fund it by taxes. It's that part, only leaves you extra it's, spending cuts, it's, it's, doesn't if it? If you have a sensible plan to balance your public finances, you have a stronger economy and you have stronger public services. I keep asking you very straight questions about well, where the money coming from. You, no, you keep saying sensible and balanced, balanced no. and sensible. That's not with respect exactly <laughs> what I'm asking. I'm just asking where the money comes from. I've just from. given you very specific numbers. By the way, you don't get anything like that from the Labour Party. Indeed, they don't even talk about actually, this NHS forward view. Actually, it's very interesting. They're offering less money for the NHS in the first period, well, 2.5 billion, but they are saying exactly how they're going to raise the money, well, which you are not. Let's be clear. If you have an Ed Miliband Scottish Nationalist Government, they will trash this economy and they won't be able to pay for the public services. Right? And they will undermine economic security and do cost people jobs in this country and we'd be back to square one and okay. that would be an outrage do you given think all the work we've done in this country to get where we are so we can support people in work and can create jobs and can support our national health service. Okay. Well, let's talk about something that is funded. You find a billion pounds for the inheritance tax yeah. giveaway. There you are as Chancellor. You find an extra billion pounds. You're not thinking, first and foremost, about all those people on welfare who are wondering what cuts they're going to face, the disabled people, people with families, people in real trouble. No, no, you're going to give it to relatively well off people in the southeast of England who've got houses they'd like to hand down. Doesn't that say a lot about your values? Well, I think this is about values. And Conservatives support the basic human instinct to provide for your children. And we believe that your home, which you've worked for and you've saved for, should belong to you and your family, not the tax man. So we will take family homes out of inheritance tax. We will effectively increase the inheritance tax threshold to £1 million so that only millionaires pay inheritance tax as but originally what about, what designed about the for that children tax. of families on welfare? We, we are on the side of hard-working people. We want to support the most vulnerable in our society, but you do that by backing the aspirations in our society as well. And the basic aspiration to provide for your children is a deep-rooted human instinct, which we support. Now, other parties okay. may not. Other parties may think, OK, you've been taxed when you earned it, and taxed when you bought the home, now we're going to tax you when you die. Actually, Conservatives don't believe that. We believe you should protect the family home. Today we're taking the family home out of inheritance. Tax. Do you think it was shrewd, adroit politics and the good use of language to describe the leader of the opposition as a backstabber? Well, I think this goes to the judgment of the person who wants to be our Prime Minister, Ed Miliband. And he won the leadership of the Labour Party on the back of trade union votes. Now he wants to get into Downing well, Street on, on the back of the Scottish Nationalists. No, no. It would be an the, Ed Miliband the, the, the Scottish attack, Nationalist the, government the that would undermine our economic his, security, undermine our national security. The attack security. is about standing against his brother. What is wrong well, with that? In democratic politics, if people want to stand for a job, they have every right to do so. No, he won the Labour leadership standing against his brother, but with the support of the trade unions. He didn't actually win the support of the rest of his party. Uh, now he wants to get into this country, into Downing Street, not with the support of the country, but with the support of the Scottish I'm Nationalist sure he's, Party. I'm sure he's fighting it, it, for every it is, vote. it is this alliance between people who want to bankrupt our country and people who want to break up our country, and that is on the ballot paper on May the 7th. People want to know if you want to avoid an Ed Miliband Scottish Nationalist government, you have got to support the Conservatives in this election. Did he backstab his brother? Well, he stood against his brother. Well, that's different. Well, isn't it? And used deals with the trade unions to get himself into office. Is, this, is that perfect, backstabbing? Well, really? it is, of course it's backstabbing. And it's perfectly Why? reasonable. I mean, Andrew, it, more, more than reasonable. somebody standing against Margaret Thatcher, or a leader, or Margaret Thatcher standing no. against Edward Heath. Is that backstabbing? Look, it goes to the question of the judgment of the person who wants to be our Prime Minister. And he is, prepared to, he is prepared to entertain an arrangement with Scottish nationalists who want to weaken our national security, 
borrow and tax even more, take our okay. country back to square one and break None it apart. None of which has anything to do with his brother. But moving, moving finally on, yeah. what about the Conservative campaign this week? A lot of people have looked at this and said, this is the week when you have stalled and they don't see what? where you are going to find the extra seats you need to cross the, the, the finishing line and form a majority government. Well, I just don't accept that at all. If you look over the last week, we've set out ambitious plans for a million more homeowners, two million more jobs, three million apprentices. We've got and such a positive... aren't moving. We've got such a positive and ambitious vision for our all country. Right. But uh, let me just okay. say this. It is a Very close quickly. election, and if you think you can sit this election out or vote for a protest party, then you will let Ed Miliband and the Scottish Nationalists in. Stick with the positive vision. And that's vision. a real threat in your view? I think it's a threat. And you, there's a positive vision from the Conservatives as the alternative. For now, George Osborne, thank you very much. Over to Charlotte.